Hey, what's going on, everyone? Um, I'm literally running off to work as I record this, but I had to uh, get this video out as fast as I could. This is easily the most interesting uh, bundle I've ever seen. It has Linux stuff. And it has the most interesting um, programming books I have ever seen in one of these ebook bundles. I don't want you to use my affiliate link. I mean, I, I have a link below, but it's not for me. Uh, I want you to donate to the EFF because of what's happening with net neutrality. I mean, we all sort of figured it might go down this way uh, this time, but EFF deserves your support and, you know, make sure to select them as the charity on your way out. I will demonstrate how to do that in just a second because I'm buying this bundle right now. Some of these books I have read, uh, others I are, they're literally almost to the book on my Amazon wish list. Um, and I just wanted you to kind of see why I think this is so interesting. So in the one dollar, I can't believe this is a dollar. I literally was about to drop forty bucks on learning you a Haskell for great good in the next week, and then this bundle came out. So that alone for me is going to be worth a dollar. Learning you a Haskell for great good uh, came out. Haskell is a functional, very interesting functional programming language, and um, this guy, a young guy from, uh, I want to say Hungary, but somewhere in Eastern Europe, wrote this book that became a smash hit immediately because it was not a dry academic treatment of the language. It was a fun and interesting treatment of the language. Um, Haskell is really interesting. I have not worked with it myself, but it's one of those languages that is on my short list of stuff to look at, stuff to learn. Um, and then there was an Erlang book that was made, uh, I believe, after the Haskell for Great Good book became a smash hit. So Erlang is another really interesting uh, language that's seen a resurgence lately uh, because of things like WhatsApp using it. Um, it was kind of relegated to, it, it's kind of messaging focused in many ways. So like it was used by telecoms and stuff for the last 20 years. Um, but now there's really interesting languages built on top of that or implemented in Erlang, things like Elixir, which are very Python-like in a way, or feel that way. Um, so can't go wrong with any of these books. Uh, Teach Your Kids to Code. I don't have kids yet, but um, this is something that I'll definitely be planning to do. If you have kids, check it out. The Linux command line, I think this is just one of those, um, one of those standards that everybody should work through at some point. It's an extremely thorough treatment of not only bash and like command line stuff, but just kind of how to think about that stuff and how to introduce yourself to it. Because going from being a GUI user to being a, um, you know, CLI user, someone that can actually do real things on the system and automate things and suddenly become a thousand times faster than when you're using a graphical user interface, this is a very, uh, a nice introduction to that. Okay, now we're getting to the, the crazy stuff here. So I think these, <laughs> man, I would pay a hundred bucks for these right now. Uh, Land of Lisp is one of the most interesting and fun introductions to Lisp, which in my opinion is maybe the greatest programming language ever so far. It is a fun introduction by sort of making Lisp games. Um, and by the end, you will have a, <laughs> you'll have kind of an understanding of programming and of Lisp that you might not even know you have, but it will make learning other languages much easier uh, from there because you'll just have this sort of intuition about how things work and how it's really hard to explain. Um, I think Peter Norvig wrote a great post about, or was it Eric Raymond? Anyway, one of these computing, you know, icons uh, wrote about how learning Lisp will change how you approach programming for the rest of your life. And even if you don't use it every day, the investment in learning Lisp will make you better at everything you do in software development and programming from that day on. Racket is a, a very modern uh, Lisp that's really well suited for learning. Um, it's almost small talk like in its, uh, it's got this incredible kind of learning environment um, where you can right away start working with like graphics and you can make like spaceships take off. And like, so if you're, if you're younger or, or, you know, you really are allergic to dry programming texts, um, you know, Racket and Realm of Racket might be a great way to start. I mean, Land of Lisp is amazing too. Um, another, uh, so Racket is a Lisp. This is kind of a weird thing, right? So Lisp is this family of languages uh, that sort of started from the principles that uh, John McCarthy 
came up with in the 1950s. It's actually one of the oldest languages that's still in use. Um, and somehow, the most famous computing minds all seem to agree that it's one of the most interesting languages ever, and everyone should learn it. Closure is another Lisp. Uh, this is a Lisp that I have uh, much more experience with. Um, basically, syntactically, these languages look very, very similar. Closure is a Lisp that's implemented on in Java on the JVM. So you have access to all the uh, sort of Java libraries and stuff, uh, and it once you compile it, it just spits out Java bytecode. So Java interop is um, seamless, essentially. Um, it's a really powerful, interesting language that's very opinionated, maybe more so than other Lisps, about uh, mutability, and, well, specifically immutability. If that doesn't mean anything to you, um, I kind of don't re recommend that Clojure is like the first or second language you learn. Um, I think it would be super cool if you started with something like Python, Ruby, Bash, then moved on to maybe Lisp using Land of Lisp or Realm of Racket, doesn't really matter. Um, and then, you know, pick up something like JavaScript. You'll see how easy it is to pick up JavaScript and, and other popular languages, kind of these Algol-based languages, um, not based, but inspired, derived languages, um, which are, which make up most of, like, commercial, the, the, the programming industry. Um, and then, Clojure is very interesting because it solves problems that you probably won't face until you work on some large programming projects. Um, the nightmarish, like, state machine horrors that you'll see as a working programmer working in other languages, like, specifically, <laughs> like, in Java, uh, or even in, you know, very large um, Bash projects, you, you'll see this these problems already. Um, actually, Bash is almost like a, it's like the perfect case for, for things that <laughs> Clojure solves. Um, but also large Ruby and Rails projects, um, certainly large JavaScript uh, projects. Um, God, this is probably not making sense to anyone. I'm sorry. I just I love this stuff so much, and just reading these books will give you an introduction that will change your mind about programming forever in, in the most interesting way. You will you will be able to have more interesting thoughts and have way more fun with technology after reading this stuff. Um, Art of assembly language, oldie but a goodie. Um, x86 uh, assembly. Yeah, if you want to be hardcore, this is a... If you're really trying to learn the language, I recommend this book. Before you jump into the art of assembly language, I actually recommend that you um, pick up some of the Zaktronics games. Uh, games like Shenzhen IO and... Oh, what was the other one called? TLC978? I don't know, it was like a computer name. Um, but Zaktronics, amazing games that basically teach you assembly without you realizing that it's really, you're just writing assembly by the end. Um, and then if you're like, oh, cool, I want to do this, I want to play with microcontrollers, I want to really learn actual x86 assembly, this is a great place to start. Think like a programmer. Most people cannot solve problems, and learning more languages does not help them become a better problem solver. Well, this book is all about that. How do you actually solve pro problems using programming. Um, it's incredibly, I mean, this is sort of the, this is what you're, why we make so much money, because we know how to solve problems. And if you're just someone that knows a programming language, but doesn't really understand how to decompose, think about solve problems and structure software, then you're, I don't want to say useless, but it's just, you're missing out on a huge part of what makes, you know, people that are great at these skills, so powerful, um, and able to do so many different things, so many interesting things. Um, so think like a programmer. Yeah. You know, goddamn, eight bucks. Yeah. Anyway, the art of R programming. If you're interested in statistics, data science, R is a requirement. This, I have not read this book, but here it is. Okay. Codecraft. Um, yeah, writing good code is a hard problem and you should read about it. Um, I also recommend books like Refactoring, uh, which is an oldie, but a really, really goodie. I'm actually working through that right now. Um, things like Microsoft Press's uh, Code Complete, the second edition, also just like amazing for beginners. This is just like the clincher for me. Wicked Cool Shell Scripts. Um, it's just like a library of awesome shell scripts. So like, if you need to do basic tasks in Bash, like here are some useful ones, but it's also done in this kind of educational way 
um, that the, it's not just a recipes book like some of the um, some of those O'Reilly recipe books um, for different programming languages where it doesn't really explain anything except this is how you do it in the language. Here's an example. Figure it out on your own. Um, so this is a little bit more pedagogically sound. Um, again, another R book if you're into statistics. I don't use C-sharp at all, but I know some people that do, and they, it's, it actually seems to be a really nice language. So if you're interested in security and you know C-sharp, then this might not be a bad way to kind of take that, that slightly different path from being like, you know, a C-sharp, like MVC programmer to getting a little bit into security using a language that you already know, if you already know C-sharp. <sighs> Sorry, I'm so excited about this. I, this video is way too long. Um, okay, I actually don't want to do water charity. I'm going to do 25, and I'm going to hit choose where your money goes. And for my charity, I'm going to select the EFF. I'm sorry about water. I'll give water a dollar. No Starch Press is amazing. They are a company that always does the right thing that supports people that are being attacked by enormous corporations who are suing them for exposing some security vulnerabilities. You can look up the details of that. But um, yeah, No Starch deserves your money. And the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, absolutely deserves your money because they're about to start suing the shit out of the US government for net neutrality. And yeah, this is who you want to be supporting. So thank you for sticking with me through this for the three of you that actually stuck it out to the end. Um, I just can't tell you how excited about this one I am. Uh, I'm going to buy this right now. Right on. Peace. This channel is overwhelmingly focused on, on getting beginners to the point where they are ready for their first sysadmin job or their first programming job because I think that's when you really start learning. And so much of what I do on this channel is sort of trying to preserve the excitement that you have as a beginner um, while making that first slog, like learning all this new information as, as bearable as possible. And I think I do that to a fault sometimes. For example, uh, I made a video pointing out a Java bundle because I know a ton of you ask me, should I learn Java? You know, I'm in India and all the contracting jobs around me require Java. Um, or even I'm in a smaller city in the US and it's like there's three languages available and 70% of the market is Java. So it's like I recommend Java books. But if you want to have fun programming, if you want to become a great programmer that can pick up any language quickly, then I really recommend um, some of the languages and kind of ideas in this book bundle. 